The Inspector is a place in which you will spend a lot of editing in DaVinci Resolve. Today, I'm going to be giving a quick tutorial on the two main tabs, the video and the audio, because that's where you are going to be spending most of your time if you are wanting to use this panel. It's found in the edit page on the top right hand corner. If you click on that, you will be brought to a list of tabs inside the video tab. If we are to use a car as an analogy, the inspector, along with all the cuts you will be making in the edit page, would be the frame of the car, the base to what all the rest is built on. Fusion would be all of the internal stuff, like the engine and lights, making it function with style, making it move for example. The color page would be the paint gloss and texture on the outside of the car, making it look good. The first tab underneath the video tab is the transform, in which you can use all of these sliders to adjust the properties of this video. If we want to adjust the zoom property of this video, we simply hover over the zoom, click and drag left or right. Right for positive numbers and left for negative numbers. One is always the default setting for the zoom. If we unlock this track, we can freely adjust the X zoom or the Y zoom. The next tab down is the position. You can either use the X slider or the Y slider to adjust your clip. If you would like to add an animation to your clip, go over to the right of all of these sliders and you will find this little diamond shape. If you click on that, that will add a keyframe at this frame right here. This is your very first frame of the video. If you move now a few frames later, and adjust that same variable, you'll see it turns orange again. Now, if we go back to the start of your clip, the position variable will change over that selected time that you have made with your keyframes. To reset all of your variables, go to the top right hand corner of that transform tab and press the reset button. And that will reset everything back to the default. If you wanna learn more about keyframes, comment below. If I get five comments that you guys wanna learn about keyframes, I will make a special video dedicated to just keyframes. Other sliders include rotation angle, anchor point, pitch, yaw, and the flip button. All of which, except for the flip, you can add keyframes to. The next tab down from the transform is cropping, which might do what you expect. Cropping left, cropping right, cropping the top, and cropping the bottom. And if you want, amongst all of those, you can add a softness to the edge. Our next tab down is a very useful tab if you don't have a lot of time to make keyframes on every single one of your videos. Go to the dynamic zoom tab, click on it, and click the orange switch to turn it on. This will activate a Ken Burns effect on your video over the period of time that your video is selected. You can see it is slowly easing out. And if we want it to ease in, we can simply go to the swap button and press swap. Now it will ease in instead of out. If you use the drop down menu, you can select ease in, which will create a different kind of Ken Burns. Instead of being a linear effect, you can have it ease in, ease out, or ease in and out. Ooh. Next step down is compositing. If we find an effect with a black background, we can simply place it on top of our video that we want, go up to the composite mode, go under normal, and press add. And that will add it on top of this image very easily. Here you have a little subscribe effect that I made in Fusion. By the way guys, if you're getting a lot of value out of this video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more content like this. The tab under composite is speed change. If we click on that, you will see this menu appears. In this menu, you will find a tab that says speed, a tab that says frames per second, and two little checkboxes for pitch correction and ripple timeline. First, I will talk about the speed. If we simply click on the video, highlight it orange, then go over to the speed wheel and scroll it down to eight 80%, we can create a slower image. If we go and scroll it up above 100%, it'll be even faster than it was before. 100% is always the default for the speed. If we slow down the video speed, that would imply that the video is stretched out longer, but we see that the video isn't moving at all. If we click ripple timeline, it will adjust the timeline to fit the video's needs. Again, we can reset our speed by clicking the reset button. Up next, one of my favorite tabs to use is the stabilization tab. Take this video for instance. It's a little jostly, but if we go over to stabilization, click perspective, then click camera lock, then click stabilize, it will analyze the video and completely stabilize it. Now look at how smooth that is. This is before, this is after. This will smooth out any little jumps in your video's performance. Our next tab down is lens correction. Sadly, this isn't a feature allowed in the free version of DaVinci Resolve, but we can kind of see what it's supposed to do if we use this little slider. 
we can have a fisheye look, or if we have too much fisheye in our video, we can adjust it with this distortion slider. Now to retime and scaling. If you have a very choppy video, after using slow-mo, such as this one, see all the frames are a little spaced apart? That's not what we want. So we can go down to retime process, then go down to optical flow. It'll actually smooth out all of your frames to give you a better slow-mo clip. Well, that's it for the video side. Now we can jump over to the audio. The audio is a lot simpler than the video. The first tab is the volume. We can simply adjust the volume using this slider here. Again, we can use a keyframe to animate this volume as well. The pan is exactly what you would think. Positive is to the right and negative is to the left. Like you can hear my voice in your left ear right now, or if I add a pan animation, I can take my voice over to the right side of your ear. Of course, this will only work if you are wearing headphones. Next up is pitch. This can get a little weird. If you bring up the pitch a few semitones. It's all over here with another vlog coming to you live from my amazing office setup. See how weird that sounds? Sense are just a smaller unit of semitones. Now speed change is the exact same in the audio as the video, but since we are using the video's speed, the audio doesn't matter that much. And then the last tab is the equalizer. This one is a whole other video of its own, but for a basic rundown of what it is, its job is to enhance certain frequencies given by human voices. So if we take this knobby thing and drag it up, this will boost the lower end of my voice. And if we take this one, and drag it up, this will boost the higher end of my voice. If we listen to it uh, without eight semitones on it. What's up, everybody? It's Oliver here with another vlog coming to you live from my amazing office setup. Then we click the equalizer on. What's up, everybody? It's Oliver here with another vlog coming to you live from my amazing office setup. Well guys, that was a very basic rundown of the inspector tool. I hope you guys found it very helpful. If you did, smash that like button and be sure to subscribe for more content like this. Comment below on what my next tutorial should be. I'll see you guys in the next one.